Some say he was the worst person alive, more brutal and cunning than Ted Bundy, and more cruel than Jeffrey Dahmer. We're talking about H.H. H. Holmes. Born Herman Webster Mudgett, 1861, in Gilmington, New Hampshire, he was a notorious killer and was hung for his crimes at the age of 36 in 1896. His crimes? Confessing to 27 murders with only 9 confirmed and thought to have killed up to 200 people. But when he died, his story lived on. When he was a small child, he murdered and tortured animals, as well as dealing with a violent and abusive father. His abusive childhood could possibly be the reason he turned into a psychopathic monster he was just years away from. At age 16, he graduated from high school and took teaching jobs in nearby towns. On July 4th, 1878, he married Clara Loveringer and had their firstborn son, Robert, in 1880. When Holmes was 18, he enrolled in the University of Vermont, but soon dropped from the school and decided to pursue another college. In 1882, he enrolled into the University of Michigan's Department of Medicine and Surgery and graduated two years later in 1884. During this time, he worked in the anatomy lab under Professor Herdman that was the instructor for anatomy. There, Holmes learned the components of human dissection. A boy went missing years later and Holmes was accused of murder due to the fact that he was last seen with the boy. Holmes denied the murder and claimed he was a simple life insurance frauder. Holmes was accused of murder again, that of another little boy, and claimed that boy left to his home in Massachusetts and no investigation was started. Holmes then left town quickly. He traveled to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and got a job as a keeper at Norristown State Hospital, but quit days later. He then took a job at a drugstore and while he was working there, a boy died after taking medicine that was purchased at the store. Holmes denied any involvement and then quickly left town. Before moving to Chicago, Holmes changed his name to Henry Howard Holmes to avoid any scam suspicions. He then divorced his wife and married Mitra Balkanat in 1886, two weeks after the wedding. The suit never went anywhere, and in technical terms, he was still married to both women at the same time. Holmes had a daughter with the woman in 1886 that was named Theodat Holmes. The three lived together in Wilmot, Illinois, but Holmes spent most of his time in Chicago on business. In 94, Holmes married Georgiana Yoke in Denver, Colorado, while still legally married to Clara and Mitra. Holmes later began to work at a drugstore and soon purchased a plot of empty land across from the store. Construction began in 1887 and soon Holmes's murder castle would become a reality. The building was meant for multiple use with the first floor a new drugstore and the second floor's apartment and retail. Holmes then refused to pay the architect or the steel company for the building. They soon sued in 1888. Holmes would soon add a third addition, telling investors and suppliers that the building was intended to become a hotel for the World's Columbian Exposition. Furniture suppliers found that Holmes was hiding unpaid furniture in hidden rooms and passageways. Through knowledge of Holmes' crookedness, investors pulled out of the deal and the third floor was never finished. Shortly after, the murders would begin. In 1891, Julia and Pearl Smith disappeared. Julia was married to the jeweler, Connor Smith, that worked in the pharmacy and Pearl was their daughter. Holmes was having relations with Julia and soon became his mistress. When Connor discovered the affair, he quit his job and moved from the hotel. Julia soon won custody of Pearl and lived with Holmes in the hotel. They both disappeared on the Christmas Eve of 1892 and was never heard from again. Holmes claimed that she had died during an abortion, but the true fate of the two women were never recovered. Emmeline Sagrande began working in the building in 1892 and soon disappeared as well. 
She disappeared that December and was never heard from again. Edna Van Tessel was also a woman that was thought to be a victim, but was never confirmed. After working at a chemical bank for a short while, Holmes met a fellow fraudster named Ben Patezel who was a carpenter with a criminal background. Patezel soon became Holmes's right man, and they created many schemes together. When an actress moved to Chicago named Minnie Williams, Holmes met her in an unemployment office, but rumored to have met her before in Boston. He asked if she wanted to come work for him, and she complied, and Holmes and her started a romance. They moved in together in Lincoln Park as husband and wife in Chicago. Williams' sister, Nanny, came to visit and stayed with Holmes and her while she was in Chicago. Both women were never seen alive after July 5th. 1893. But it was not the simple murders that struck people of Holmes's evilness. It was the hotel. The hotel was completely rigged in favor of Holmes. Doors leading nowhere, blank rooms, doors open and there are brick, staircases that lead into walls and leading nowhere, soundproof rooms, mazes of hallways leading nowhere, and secret passageways everywhere. The house itself and the thought of that is genuinely scary and creepy. He also had trap doors that led to chutes that would send bodies of people to the basement, and the basement were torture chambers and hanging rooms where he would torture his victims. Holmes later attempted insurance fraud by setting a portion of his hotel on fire and the insurance companies wanted to prosecute Holmes for arson. In July of 1894, he was arrested and put into jail but was soon bailed out. When out, he joined up with Patezel and decided to commit insurance fraud. Patezel was going to commit insurance fraud to collect the $10,000 policy that was placed on him. But Holmes turned on him and knocked him out with chloroform and set him on fire with benzene. Holmes then collected the insurance payout and was able to manipulate Patezel's wife to let three of their five children go into his custody, Alice, Nellie, and Howard. Police would later find their decomposing bodies in Holmes' hotel basement. Frank Geyer, a policeman that worked on the case, described the smell of the basement extremely disturbing and disgusting as they dug. The eldest daughter and baby stayed with Mrs. Patezel. Holmes then claimed that he lost the three kids and police were assigned to find the kids. Their bodies were exhumed in the hotel's basement and Holmes was arrested for multiple charges including Patezel's murder. Holmes had murdered the kids by forcing them into a big trunk, drilling a hole and putting a hose in it hooked up to a gas line. The girl slowly suffocated due to asphyxiation. In October 1895, Holmes was sentenced to death for the murder of Benjamin Patezel. Once convicted, Holmes let them hear the whole story. The murdered Patezel kids, and along with them, 27 other confessed murders. He gave contradicting stories of his life and lied on several occasions. He even claimed innocence at one point, saying that he had been possessed by Satan. Witnesses say that while in prison, Holmes's face had taken a sadistic permanent tone, a satanic cast. On May 7, 1896, Holmes was hung at Mayo Mensing Prison for the murder of Ben Patezel. Holmes's neck did not snap. He was strangled to death slowly. The whole execution took 15 minutes, and he was pronounced dead after 20. He had asked for his coffin to be filled with cement, for he feared people would dig him up and try to dissect him, and his request was carried out. Many books and articles have been made about him, and some journalists have made the speculation that H.H. H. Holmes could have been London's Jack the Ripper, or an accomplice of him, but claims are unlikely. But even years ago, Holmes can still send a shiver down your spine even after over a hundred years. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell beside it and select the box. That way you'll be notified for any new videos. Also be sure to look up other Listen documentaries on our channel if you're looking for some chills down your spine. Check back on our channel routinely, for we upload every two to three days. Thank you for watching.